team and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. If all goes to plan, Winnebago County leaders hope very few people show up to the polls in the November election. There's an alternative way they hope voters cast ballots. Statements during a local county board meeting create an uproar. Hear the comments and actions some fellow members now want taken. The leading doctor of the COVID-19 task force sits down for an interview. We'll hear what he has to say about the country's response to COVID. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. As COVID continues to cause concerns across the state line, some are worried about the upcoming November election. Several local counties have already made changes. In Winnebago County, that means a push for vote by mail. Dylan Srocki has more. Local election officials are expecting to see a spike in people voting by mail as they try to avoid going to the polling place on election day. This is just helping people vote from home, staying safe and not having to go into the polling place on election day. Stacy Bixby is the executive director of the Rockford Board of Elections. She's encouraging anyone who is concerned about COVID-19 to consider filling out an application to vote by mail. There's a lot of people that don't want to put their health at at risk and we have no idea what's going to be going on in October and November with COVID. As part of legislation passed earlier this year by the state of Illinois, anyone who has voted since 2018 will be sent a vote by mail application. And to eliminate voter fraud, a bipartisan panel of three election judges will work together to verify signatures on mail-in ballots. Just as when you show up in person, you have to sign your card and they verify your, your name and your address and then you can vote. This time you've already voted, but they're going to do that verification. So there are things in place already. Carol Davies with the League of Women Voters of Greater Rockford hopes people take advantage of their right to vote. She believes this is a great option for people who may not feel safe physically going to their polling place. Voting is just such an important right and it's what preserves our democracy. Everybody needs to vote who's qualified to vote. So with that in mind, you pick the way that is most convenient and most safe for you. If you want to vote by mail for the election this year, make sure you send in your application to do so by October 29th. In Rockford, for your home team, I'm Dylan Siraki. A Marengo man is convicted of killing his newborn baby almost a decade after his death. A Boone County judge found Robert Gee guilty of involuntary manslaughter. In May 2011, Gee shook his 10-week-old son, causing his death. Witnesses in the two-day bench trial testified that the 34-year-old admitted the incident to them. Gee is facing up to 14 years behind bars for the crime. He's set to be sentenced September 24th. He'll have to serve at least half of that sentence. A state line committee chairman is being removed from his position. Major cleavage could impact some of the mobile. Those are the words Stevenson County Board Member Alvin Weyer said at a County Administration and Legal Affairs Committee meeting earlier this month. He's that committee's chairman. It's Weyer's suggestion for changing the sexual harassment policy. In it, he said someone's clothing would entice or invite people to sexually harass them, essentially shifting the blame from abusers to victims. Many board members, including board chairman Bill Hadley, quickly interjected, saying those comments are illegal and move in the wrong direction. Hadley has removed Wire from all committees and urges him to apologize for his comments. We'll hear more from Hadley tonight at 9 and 10. More than 950 new people test positive for coronavirus across Illinois. 14 of those are in Winnebago County. The county saw seven more people die from the virus. In the last seven days, an average of just over 2.5% of people tested have gotten a positive result. Roughly 163,700 people across the state have been confirmed infected since the outbreak began. Two state-line hospitals get help to treat COVID-19 patients. Rockford's Swedish American will see $10,400,000. Kishwaukee Community Hospital in DeKalb's getting $3.8 million. The money comes from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Health Provider Relief Fund. More than $739 million was spread out across 60 Illinois hospitals, seeing a large number of COVID patients. The White House held its first coronavirus briefing since April today. Leading coronavirus task force Dr. Anthony Fauci says he wasn't invited. Dr. Fauci says he won't resign from the task force, despite some recent criticism from President Donald Trump. The doctor expanded on that in an interview. Michael Clark has the recap. You've put aside even considering resigning from the task force, right? 
Oh, definitely. I'm not even thinking about that. Responding to recent criticism from some federal leaders, including President Donald Trump, Dr. Anthony Fauci says he remains focused on helping the world through the coronavirus pandemic. That kind of noise just gets in the way of the common job that we have and the common goal that we want to reach. It's just unfortunate that some people have made those kinds of remarks that are really not founded in any reality at all. The nation's top infectious disease expert is encouraged by recent results from two possible vaccines still being tested in trials. Obviously, we need to do more studies with more people, but I'm uh, actually heartened by what I'm seeing that more than one candidate appears to be inducing the kinds of responses that favorably might produce uh, you know, a degree of optimism about whether or not they're going to be able to block infection. Fauci says the recent surge in cases may have come from some states that opened too quickly. He believes some should consider taking a step back, but above all, he's encouraging personal responsibility. He says while young people may be less likely to get seriously ill, they can still spread the virus to others. Tonight, there's continued calls to wear a mask and social distance. This is going to end, but it's going to be up to us. It's not going to end spontaneously. We've got to do the things that are necessary to put a stop to this. That's Michael Clark reporting. On the topic of opening schools, Dr. Fauci says he doesn't believe the solution will be one size fits all. We have the full interview with Fauci posted on our website. Just go to mystateline.com. West Nile virus pops up in a third stateline county. Ogle County's health department says a mosquito pool tested positive for the virus. The group of infected insects was found near Rochelle. In June, Boone County found mosquitoes with West Nile virus. Winnebago County confirmed a bird had tested positive for West Nile earlier this month. No counties reporting any people with the virus. The virus is transmitted after a mosquito feeds on an infected bird. West Nile symptoms are fever, nausea, and head and body aches within two weeks of a bite. People living in Habitat for Humanity homes come together for a neighborhood-wide garage sale. Over a dozen homeowners are coming together for the event. It'll take place in Rockford's Beverly Park neighborhood. The Rockford Area Habitat for Humanity has built over 70 homes in that area. The sale will run Friday, July 31st through Sunday, August 2nd. The first garage sale started as a way to meet neighbors and bring people together and earn extra money. This is the fourth year owners are hosting the sale. Your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Sports Director Scott Ledford, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. The state of Illinois is set to make a major infrastructure investment. Over the next six years, more than $21 billion will go into making road and bridge improvements. Eyewitness News is keeping you connected to the Capitol. It's funded by the Rebuild Illinois Capital Plan. In all, 3,300 miles of road and more than 8 million square feet of bridge deck will be replaced. Governor J.B. Pritzker says the projects will mean thousands of jobs. In the first year, the Rockford region will see about $12 million. Projects include the interchange reconstruction at Harrison Avenue and Interstate 39. Starting Monday, the eastbound exit for Alpine Road on Bypass 20 will close. Crews are working on the shoulder and resurfacing that portion of the bypass. Detours will be marked. Delays for drivers are expected. The exit is expected to reopen August 3rd. 2021 will mark a new chapter for professional baseball in the state line. The Beloit Snappers will play their first season in the city's new Riverbend Stadium. Season tickets are now on sale. For a $100 deposit, you'll get first pick of seats. Construction crews broke ground on the stadium last month. It's being built on vacant property between the Beloit Transit System Transfer Center and the Rock River. Capacity is expected to be 3,500 fans. The Snappers are the Class A affiliate of the Oakland Athletics. You can find more information about the season tickets on the My State Line app. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. And a couple of showers and a few thunderstorms roll through for some earlier this morning. A little bit of a break, a few peaks of sunshine, but now with a weak area of low pressure moving in from the west and southwest, we're starting to see that rain begin to move in. Actually, has been for the past hour or so. It's a pretty steady rainfall. There have been a few embedded thunderstorms with that, but better instability stays a little more focused to the south here this evening. So that's where a lot of the the thunderstorm activity will lie. We actually
actually had a thunderstorm. Uh, we were watching just to the southwest here of Whiteside County, but you actually see that turning a little bit more to the south, feeding into that better instability. There have been a few severe thunderstorm warnings, even a couple tornado warnings down in central Illinois. And again, this is where the greatest risk for any strong to severe thunderstorms will stay as we go through this evening. For us, it is going to be that steady rainfall coming down. Moderate at times, shouldn't really do much to drop the visibility, but we will hang on to that for the next couple of hours. We'll start to see that kind of come to an end by about 7, 8 o'clock here this evening and then just isolated through about the midnight hour. There will be a couple embedded thunderstorms with that, but overall our strong to even severe threat for us is pretty low because of that cloud cover and now that steady rainfall coming in. Cold front works into the northwest as we go through the overnight and then into tomorrow. This will kind of keep some of that cloud cover around, but by about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, that front should be passing to the south. So that will allow a little more dry air to move in, which actually will help to clear out our skies for tomorrow afternoon. So once we kind of get rid of this rainfall tonight, we need some of the rain. We're doing okay with where we should be for this time of the month as far as rainfall is concerned, uh, but we always could use that rainfall. Things are actually going to stay pretty dry through the end of this week and then even going into the weekend. Now tomorrow night into early Thursday morning, there could actually be some patchy fog as an area of high pressure moves in. Futurecast wants to paint up a couple of sprinkles here Thursday afternoon. We've got some dry air. We might just get some of those fair weather cumulus clouds to develop. Maybe a sprinkle, but any measurable precipitation stays pretty low here for the next several days. So with that rainfall coming in now, we've got about a quarter of an inch up to a half an inch. That's where we get a little bit more moderate rain in some spots uh, through about now, through about 8, 9 o'clock this evening. And then again, isolated here as we go through the midnight hour. As far as rainfall is concerned, so far for the month of July, we've had just a little over two inches of precipitation. Now, of course, we are going to add on to that, but we're about a half an inch deficit of where we should be. When we look at our summer months, June and July, we've gotten almost uh, 5.9 inches of rain. This is still about 1.3 inches below where we should be for our summer months. Now, when we look at the year as a whole, going back to January 1st, precipitation uh, over 20 0.5 inches, which actually is a little bit of a surplus, not much. So we're okay in some of these numbers, but again, we don't want to get too far behind. A live look with our Merced Sky Track camera now out to over downtown Rockford. We're pretty thick with the cloud cover, and you see that rain coming down. Quite a difference from what it was just a couple hours ago. 73 degrees in Freeport, 76 in Rockford, and 73 right now in Rochelle. We're down to 68 degrees as that rainfall continues here for us these next few hours. Temperatures tomorrow up to 84. It'll be a cloudy start and then gradual clearing as we head through the afternoon hours. Back into the 80s on Thursday, upper 80s for Friday, low 90s here as we head into the weekend. Got to watch Sunday though. We might actually get a better chance for some thunderstorms, especially later in the day and then going into Monday. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. Well, Fred Van Vliet and the Toronto Raptors are ready to get back into game action. This Friday, they'll face the Rockets in an exhibition game in the bubble in Orlando. Van Vliet was encouraged by the news yesterday that no NBA players have tested positive for coronavirus in the past week. I mean, I think it's good news, and hopefully that means something good going forward. But obviously, uh, we all plan on being here for, for a while longer, so um, we have to continue to keep testing negative. But um, I guess it, it's probably a little reassuring that, you know, it seems that uh, things are, are working the way that the league intended them to work. Well, if you thought sports would give you an escape from all the negative things going on in the world, you can forget about that. As you probably know, NBA players will be allowed to wear social justice messages on their uniforms. And here you see one of the game courts in Orlando that has the words Black Lives Matter on it. The court is also surrounded by lots of video monitors that can display videos of crowds or pretty much anything. And the NFL strongly considering allowing its players to honor victims of police brutality on their helmets. The names would go on decals that will be placed on the helmets. The NFL and the Players Association are compiling a list of possible names. The Bears rookies are ready for training camp. All seven draft picks have signed contracts, including top pick Cole Komet, the tight end out of Notre Dame. Komet caught 60 passes last fall. Six of them went for touchdowns. On their second round pick, Jalen Johnson could have a chance to make the biggest impact this season. He'll get a chance to win a starting cornerback job, a spot that had been held by Prince of Mukamara. Johnson had seven picks in college at Utah. 
The Blackhawks leave for Edmonton at the end of the week. They'll jump into game action there a week from Saturday. Corey Crawford still hasn't participated in any camp practices. Stan Bowman says he's still hopeful that Crawford will make the trip to Edmonton. We are hopeful on that. I think we'll we'll be able to give you a better idea when we get uh, you know closer to the weekend. But uh, that's something that we're we're still shooting for. Showers coming through here for us this evening. A pretty steady rainfall coming down, but you see kind of that back edge already working in uh, to parts of northwest Illinois. So this isn't going to last too long, at least the steady nature of the rain. Most of this is actually going to be a good soaking rain. We could hear a few rumbles of thunder, but stronger storm activity staying to the south, where a little bit better instability has been this afternoon across central and southern Illinois. Now, while we've got a break in some of that steady rainfall, there are a couple of thunderstorms firing up over northern Iowa. This is actually along a cold front that'll move in during the overnight hours. So kind of once we get rid of this round of rain, we get a break, but still hanging on to a few isolated showers during the overnight. Could get some patchy fog too. Temperatures tonight down around 68 degrees. Our windows shift around to the southwest briefly and then to the northwest tomorrow. Highs near 84 will dry out pretty much through the end of the week. We need a little rain. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.